We've been told for years that fast charging kills batteries. The typical warning is that if you spring for too much current too quickly, you'll cook the lifespan. But what if that rule is wrong? A team at the Georgia Institute of Technology just flipped the script. They found that the faster they charged a zinc ion battery, the better it performed. A damaged battery even started healing itself. And another team has re-engineered the atomic twists that normally break a zinc ion battery down to make it stronger than ever. These aren't just lab curiosities. Zinc batteries can act as safer, cheaper alternatives to lithium for grid storage or for home use. They can't catch fire. They're made from abundant materials. But they've had one fatal flaw that's kept them from dethroning lithium. They just don't last long enough. These new discoveries could not only counter that weakness, but subvert it. So how did scientists turn atomic jitters into resilience? And how can fast charging actually help a battery perform? And what does it mean for all of us? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Incogni. Here's what these research teams discovered. Georgia Tech found that cranking up the charging speed actually smooths out zinc's surface, reversing damage instead of causing it. Meanwhile, researchers in Australia and the UK figured out how to turn cathode's biggest weakness, which is the atomic distortions that normally tear it apart, into a source of strength and flexibility. Now, I love discoveries like this because they're not about inventing some futuristic battery chemistry. They're about realizing we don't fully understand the batteries that we're already using. What if fast charging doesn't have to kill battery life? That kind of paradigm shift could improve tech across the board faster than waiting for the next big breakthrough material. Together, these breakthroughs could solve zinc ion's fatal flaw, which is the short lifespan. But to understand why this is so shocking, we need to understand why fast charging normally kills batteries. At a high level, fast charging breaks lithium batteries by overheating them. This cuts their life short, and in the worst cases, it grows sharp lithium needles called dendrites that can short circuit the whole cell. It's no wonder we've been warned against overdoing it when we charge our phones or our EVs. However, zinc ion batteries, or ZIBs, are a whole other battery chemistry, and according to the surprising discoveries, a whole other story. Research into ZIBs has been charging up, and for good reason. They promise safer, cheaper, and more sustainable solutions for energy storage. ZIBs use water-based battery fluids that simply can't catch fire the same way that lithium ones can. And zinc itself is far less toxic. Many ZIBs use manganese cathodes, which is a chemistry similar to traditional alkaline batteries, but engineered to be rechargeable. That means that recycling could slot into streams already set for single-use batteries. Zinc is also mined worldwide with generally lower environmental impacts than lithium. It's already produced at massive scale for steelmaking. Each year, we pull about 13 million metric tons of zinc, which is nearly 100 times more than lithium. With proven reserves of 210 million tons for zinc versus just 26 million for lithium, zinc is easier to source and a potentially cheaper material for batteries. A recent study pegged the raw material costs of zinc manganese dioxide batteries at $24.40 per kilowatt hour, compared to $37 for lithium iron phosphate with graphite. That's roughly one third cheaper based on materials alone. But the problem is, batteries are kind of like sneakers. You don't want to go too cheap on them because what might seem like a good deal at first will leave you with a product that wears out really fast. Lithium iron phosphate is the current favorite chemistry for grid energy installations, EVs, it's becoming more and more popular. And these batteries last around 3,000 cycles or more. Meanwhile, zinc manganese batteries have often struggled to make it to 1,000 cycles before losing 20% capacity. That's because zinc ion batteries with zinc metal anodes behave much like lithium metal batteries. As they discharge, zinc ions leave the cathode and deposit on the zinc metal anode, just as lithium ions deposit on the lithium metal anode. These deposits don't always grow evenly, and rough spots can cause metallic needles, known as dendrites, to form. These grow and branch out like snowflakes, extending further with each cycle. Now, over time, dendrites can pierce the separator between the anode and the cathode. In lithium cells, that can trigger thermal runaway and fires. Even when they don't short-circuit a battery, dendrites speed up capacity fade, which is the slow loss of battery life. High charging rates only make this worse, driving ions to deposit unevenly and supercharging dendrite growth. So both zinc ion and lithium metal batteries send metal ions to a metal anode. We also know that pushing lithium hard just fuels dendrites. That means fast charging should wreck zinc ion batteries too, right? Well, zinc again. But before we reveal how Georgia Tech watched this happen in real time with x-rays and discovered something that flips battery design on its head, let's talk about another kind of unexpected data collection. While researchers were gathering data on zinc crystals, data brokers are gathering data on you. Today's sponsor, Incogni, can help you get to the source of the problem and restore some of your privacy. 
Data brokers collect and sell your personal details to people who might use it against you. We're talking about real threats like identity theft, scams, and stalking, because they can't harm you if they can't find you. Your home address, phone number, and relative's information are being sold online. And criminals use that data to take out fraudulent loans or track people down in real life. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. It's really that easy. Their custom removals feature is really cool. You can flag any website where your data is exposed and they'll get it removed. I've seen a dramatic drop in where my information is showing up online. If you want to take back control of some of your personal information, give Incogni a try. Use code UNDECIDED at the link below and get 60% off an annual plan. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now back to those x-rays revealing Zinc's secret. A research team led by Hailong Chen at Georgia Tech studied how those dendrites that we just talked about actually form at different charging speeds from slow to fast. At Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York, they used ultra-bright x-rays to watch dendrites grow in real time. Their results discharge the assumption that fast charging always causes dendrites. It turns out that zinc performs better when it's pushed harder. At higher charging speeds, zinc ions settle quickly on the anode, forming neat hexagonal crystals that stack cleanly into smooth, compact layers. At lower charging currents, zinc ions wander lazily and form competing crystal shapes that don't fit well together. That leaves behind a loose, uneven surface. It's more like a kitchen scrubbing pad than solid sheet. Left unchecked, those jagged shards could grow into dendrites that eventually short-circuit the battery. Chen's team found that early stages of charging matter most. Plating the anode is like growing the lawn from seed. If weeds sprout first, you'll be mowing dandelions instead of grass. But a super fast charge can act like a weed killer. When the team pushed the current density up from 60 to 100 milliamps per square centimeter, a rough anode smoothed out again, which restores the battery's health. This means fast charging isn't just tolerated in zinc ion batteries, it can actually reverse damage and make them last longer. And the best part? Well, Georgia Tech's discovery doesn't require new materials or a costly redesign. All it would need is a smarter charging protocol that sends high current pulses to heal the anode and keep the battery going strong. Well, that's half the story. The other anode is the other half of the battery, and only half of the solution. Another reason zinc ion batteries don't last as long as lithium ones is their cathodes. When these batteries discharge, zinc ions leave the anode and wedge into the cathode structure. Now that crowding causes volume changes, like a sidewalk that expands in summer heat and contracts in winter cold, year after year, cracks are eventually going to form. Just like alkaline cells, manganese dioxide is a favorite cathode material for zinc ion batteries because it's cheap and abundant. But manganese cathodes face a second problem. They slowly crumble from Jan Teller distortions. Basically, Jan Teller distortions are atoms twisting like loose legs of a chair. Every charge and discharge wiggles them a little more until the whole thing gives way. These distortions are a major reason cathodes lose capacity. Thankfully, researchers at the University of Technology, Sydney in Australia, and the University of Manchester in the UK tackled the cathode problem. The teams built a new manganese graphene cathode that uses Jan Teller distortions to its advantage. These distortions make the cathode more flexible and stable against volume changes. It's like killing two birds with one of the birds. By turning a cathode's weakness into a strength, the team stretched battery life to more than 5,000 charge cycles. Even when charged and discharged at five times the recommended rate, the battery maintained a capacity of 165 milliamp hours per gram. So how did the researchers turn a flaw into a feature? By getting the Jan Teller distortions to work together instead of fight. Imagine the chaos of turning a bunch of mice loose into a room full of cats. That's Jan Teller distortions. What researchers have done is shine a laser pointer on the wall so that the cats watch it and move in unison. The researchers pulled this off by building a cathode from alternating sheets of manganese oxide and graphene. Each is just a few atoms thick. An equal mix of two types of manganese caused the Jan Teller distortions to synchronize. Instead of creating random damaging strain, the distortions worked together across the lattice to absorb and distribute the stress. This is strain engineering. The distortions squeeze the layers together and flatten them out, preventing volume swings that normally break a cathode apart. Think of it like the baklava of battery cathodes, thin graphene pastry sheets holding a manganese filling. Even when it's soaked in syrupy electrolyte or stuffed with zinc ion nuts, that pastry holds together. I really gotta stop filming before lunch. Anyway, fast charging gave the anode a free repair kit, but not so for the cathode. Adding graphene layers would increase costs. Still, that trade-off might be worth it if it doubles the cycle life. And there's another bonus to this cathode's design. It's made with simple water-based methods, which means no high heat or toxic solvents required. 
Now, fast charging anodes and tough cathodes are coming on the heels of another major leap by researchers at the Technical University of Munich. They came up with a super thin protective film for the zinc anode that helps zinc deposit smoothly, fending off dendrites. Even better, it works like a raincoat for the anode. By shrugging off water, the film slashes corrosion and reduces hydrogen buildup. The team says this could unlock zinc ion batteries lasting 100,000 cycles. So if you want the full story, I actually did a whole episode on it that I'll link in the description. Now, research like this is booming because zinc ion safety and cost advantages align perfectly with grid storage needs and home energy use, where energy density matters far less than in a phone or an EV. The question is whether the technology can finally match the durability. But while zinc ion research is fast charging, the commercial rollout, it's still flat. Canada-based company Salient Energy finally wrapped up a 10 kilowatt hour pilot project to provide residential power, which was backed by California's Energy Commission. The company acknowledged its struggles in scaling up to larger cells, and it's unclear what Salient's next steps will be. In Sweden, Enerpoli opened a 6,500 square meter factory in 2024, aiming to supply 100 megawatt hours of rechargeable zinc manganese dioxide batteries by 2026. The company claimed that its batteries could last up to 20 years and would be made with minerals mined right in Europe. But in July of 2025, Enerpoli filed for bankruptcy after failing to secure new funding in a market saturated with cheap lithium ion batteries. Now, hai Long Chen from Georgia Tech put it this way, people often overestimate the technical factor while underestimating the influence of funding, management, and market timing. That lesson is playing out with New Jersey-based EOS Energy. Instead of zinc ion, the company uses a zinc halide chemistry, which is a cousin in the same family. And it has kept scaling even as it faces legal challenges. EOS recently expanded its California plant from 35 to 60 megawatt hours and landed a 216 megawatt hour project in Missouri. It shows how the right timing and market fit can let zinc-based batteries carve out a niche in energy storage despite the obstacles. With fast charging anodes, tougher cathodes, and protective films pushing zinc ion batteries further than ever, what remains to be seen is whether the right company in the right market can finally put them to work on the grid and in our homes. But what do you think? Are cheaper, safer zinc ion batteries the best bit for grid scale energy storage or your home? Jump in the comments and let me know. You can also check out the extended cut of this video over on Patreon and a big welcome to new producer, Doug Hutton. If you'd like to join, the link's in the description and be sure to listen to my follow-up podcast still to be determined while we'll keep this conversation going. Keep your mind open, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.